Nicely done. That's the right Reverend Rob Mungle. Rob Mungle and I will be doing a, uh, a little pop-up bar uh, next door in two weeks, the Sunday before Labor Day. We're going to be doing our St. Julian Social Club. It's a circus-themed weirdo show. It's going to be running from 6 to midnight that Sunday. Please come check it out if you're interested. Are you ready for your second story? What? The second story is called Congrats, It's a Diva Cup. It's written by, and I'm going to do the best I can, it's written by Mary Osion Yee, and it's read by Jill Broomer. Ladies and gentlemen, Jill Broomer. Well, so... Years ago, I planned a wholesome family vacation at Jellystone Park with my co-parent, James, and our daughter, Margot. James and I had split years before, but ended up great friends and tried to do cool family shit together for the sake of the kid. If you haven't been to Jellystone, it's essentially cheesy family activities, cabins, and a water park. A promised good time. Now, I am someone who is hesitant to try new things without extensive, somewhat paralyzing research. Food, places, medicine, menstrual cups. But in this case, the promise of a good time at a water park was too much for my instinct of self-preservation to overcome. I, admittedly, at the too-old-not-to-know age of almost 30, had somewhat lost track of my cycle, but I estimated there was a good chance I'd start my period on this trip. Complaining about that possibility to my best friend Courtney, she suggested a menstrual cup. Again, not one to try new things, but filled with dread of a potential bloody trail following me down the lazy river, I caved. I put faith in the one she had and ordered a diva cup. It arrived in two days thanks to my devoted but morally complicated relationship with Amazon. I packed it for the trip, but made it through with no sign of my cycle. Phew, I've always been lucky, but in a bad sort of way. After getting home, I did start and decided to still try the Diva Cup because why the fuck not? It's great for the environment. Let's do this shit. I skimmed the directions thanks to my ADHD and read and reread the warnings thanks to my anxiety. As I assumed the position and slid it in, I daydreamed about a purse free from tampons. Long gone would be the days of, does anyone have a tampon in the work group chat? Maybe I'd even get a cute little case for it at Target to keep in my purse. Maybe leopard because rar. Sustainability goddess. Warrior of womanhood. I, Mary will tell the masses about the dangers of tampons for both your body and the environment and convert everyone to menstrual cups. Did you know tampons were originally designed by men, Rachel? Fight the patriarchy, I chant. So I pulled up my pants. I went to walk the dog and run errands. I get home and go check on my little friends. My underwear, the cup, my shedding, uterine lining. Hmm a small spot of blood. I must not have put it in correctly. No biggie. The pamphlet warned me about this. I'll just remove and reposition as suggested. It's really fine. Not a big deal. I'll just bear down, slide in, and... Hmm. That's weird. I can't get a grip on the little tab at the end? Okay, no biggie. Seriously, I'll just bear downer deeper and reach a little further upper. Hmm. Nope. Panic starts to flood my body. Visions of young, probably hot ER doctors at happy hour telling their friends about the girl who came in with a menstrual cup stuck inside her plague my mind. Even though I knew it wasn't anatomically possible, I envisioned a life-threatening emergency and probably, I don't know, dying because the cup pan uh, traveled into my body, causing hemorrhaging. I don't know which I did first. Panic Googled or Panic called Courtney. But I distinctly remember telling Courtney I couldn't grab a hold of the tab to break the seal, and she responded, You've never been able to, like, reach your cervix? 
I responded back in full panic mode. Courtney, this is not the time. And also cervixes and fingers are not all the same size. This was her fault, of course, this whole thing. But I was not prepared to end our 20-year friendship over a menstrual cup. Yet. <laughs> I return to bearing downerer and reaching upperer and remembering teenage me in therapy talking about how short and stubby my fingers seemed and my therapist suggested this was body dysmorphia that they were actually long and slender i thought of everyone who had said the same thing and liars all liars somewhere between pacing my house trying to chill the absolute fuck out and reading internet forums where others had been through this the forums where panicked teens ask shit like, can you get pregnant from blowjobs? Or in my case, panicked adults asking, can a diva cup get stuck inside you and travel through your body causing hemorrhaging? My friend Laura called me. Hey girl, do you want anything from the farmer's market? I wanted to say, a new life. Time machine. Longer fingers. Wider vagina. Instead, I jokingly and casually explained what was happening and asked for some peaches. This is a woman who gave birth in a bathtub unmedicated, and I was not about to reveal the fracture in my womanhood and what was stuck inside said fracture and how absolutely petrified I was to her. So, lol, no biggie, just peaches. <laughs> okay, focus. I'm human. I can use tools. Surely, of course, once upon a time, uh, cave people invented tools for occasions like this. Tweezers, tongs, a spoon? <laughs> yes, I tried them all. <laughs> to no avail, and before you judge, know that I was desperate and one day your fingers might, be not, be too, might not be long enough, ableist. Can we... Uh, Courtney calls to check in, my best friend forever. Please, what answers do you have for me? This time, much more compassionate as I cry tears of deep sorrow and fear of forever losing my vagina and dignity, she makes the ultimate offer. Do you want me to come help you get it out? She asked, unsure if this would be friendship saving or friendship breaking. I paused, contemplated it, and my God, no, I did not want this for us. I would try the tools again. Then James calls, the ex and co-parent I mentioned earlier. I explain my struggle. He feels sorry for me and then asks if I want him to help. Sure, he'd been there before. Uh, but not in this capacity. So, no, I didn't want this for us either. This I knew we couldn't recover from. Laura knocks at the door. I don't hear her. I'm still in the bathroom of doom. She calls. I answer, come in, door's open. She comes to the bathroom door. Light, sympathetic, knock, knock. Mary, you okay? I brought the peaches. Laura, what am I going to do? How do I get this thing out of me? I had now abandoned my dignity. Let her birth and nine more babies in bathtubs while riding on a Peloton. I don't fucking care. I have anxiety. Do you want help? No, thank you. I need this thing out of my vagina, not my loved ones in it. What I needed was a portal to another dimension so I could disappear forever. Laura puts the peaches on the table and leaves. I begin to fake pray, the universal sign of true distress for agnostics and atheists. Please, Lord, if you're real, help me. I promise I'll be good and I'll go to church and I'll love Jesus forever. As suspected, the Lord did not come through, point proven. Yeah. So I look up emergency rooms. Then I think, wait, Planned Parenthood. They would be way less embarrassed than an ER. They know about vaginas. They're experts. But it was Sunday at 11.15 a.m. It closed at noon. I rush over and get bombarded by pro-lifers as I approach. 
I drive past, roll my window down and scream in despair. I'm not even getting an abortion. I have a diva cup stuck inside me. Dignity now totally abandoned. I get out of the car. There's a security guard. The tears are welling up, but I hold my shit together long enough to say, hi, I need to see someone. He responds that it's about to close and they likely won't see anyone else. That answer untogethers my shit. I sob. He takes pity on me for what he doesn't know is a really stupid reason and lets me in. It's quiet with separate windows for everyone to speak to someone. Some women are crying. You can feel the stress of real, important ass things going on. And here I am, a woman, a mother, approaching 30 with a menstrual cup stuck inside her. I sit down in full snotty tears at this point. The woman at the window totally expecting me to reveal some deeply concerning shit to her asks, Are you okay, hun? I sob and half whisper, I'm sorry, this is so stupid. I have a diva cup stuck inside me. I can't get it out. I need help. It was clear she did not expect that answer. She explained, I probably can't get seen, but she would double check. She did. The answer was no. I grabbed my things. I took my diva cup stuck self back out past the security guard who pitied me. He looked at me. Were they able to help you? I sniffle. No. He apologizes. If only he knew how absolutely fucking stupid this was. I go back home, back to the bathroom of doom, trying to bear downest and reach upest with all the anxious rage I had left in me. That's it. That's fucking it. I am done with this shit. I am getting this thing out. But nothing. Every time I'm able to grab any part of it and pull, pain. Laura calls. Hey, girl, do you want me to call my midwife? I bet she could help. Yes. I need a midwife. Of course. A sweet child-delivering woman to release the silicone monster sucking at the teat of my vagina and deliver her back into her box to never be seen again. I enthusiastically accept. Yes, please. An hour later, I arrive at a clinic, closed, about to be opened just for me by this hero of a midwife. She arrives. I nod hello in shame. As I lay on the table, spread eagle, she goes, well, this must be embarrassing. In any other case, I would laugh because this is exactly my type of humor. But instead, I respond, yes, while internally, what the fucking that opener? No pun intending. Okay. Now, after this thrill of a story with twists and fear at every turn, you may be expecting a dramatic ending. Sorry to disappoint. The forceps went in, and shortly after, a purple, slightly bloody, 1.2-ounce, 3-inch silicone diva cup was born. Turns out I was right. That little bitch was suctioned to my cervix. According to the midwife, I learned I have, I, and I quote, an oddly long vaginal canal. Turns out, no short stubby fingers, body dysmorphia be damned. I paid $150, though she said she considered not charging, but she decided to anyway? Seriously, what? But my oddball hero, bless my angel, the Lord, put in my path to release me of my silicone demon baby. I went home and considered burning the diva cup, but instead boiled it and passed it on to a friend who wanted one. I never did try a menstrual cup again, though I know many who swear by them. I forgave Courtney for the suggestion. James and I never discussed it again. I enjoyed the peaches and continue to enjoy many lazy rivers, period free. I am still in a very complicated relationship with Amazon. Thank you. Uh.